Okay, so in tonight's class, review uh, Koshinage, and then Harai Koshinage, and also Tayatoshi. Come in behind, like you're punching past him. We plug around, grab the hip, then take a big step to the side, pull. Other step, hips below, and Koshinage. Step to the side with a pull. Other step, sets it up, he's halfway. Steer, hold on to the arm so he'll roll out. And roll around one, and then pick them up. You hold them in place with your grips, and you move around them. And then you can toss them. Try that setup off. So, so harai means to sweep. Uh, goshi is the same as koshi. It means hip and nage is throw. So like, koshi nage is literally hip throw. Harai goshi nage is literally sweeping hip throw. So <clears throat> you, your setup is basically the same. Right? You can pull him for the setup or you can do the walk around setup. Uh, either one is fine. This one, you once you, like on the koshi nage, you're kind of in front of him. With this one, you kind of need this leg to get kind of center line with him. So this leg is like center line, right? So you go a little bit further past him than you normally would in Koshinage. Not a ton. So like for here, and I pull, say I'm a little bit further past, like this foot's kind of in the middle. And then basically you take your thigh, uh, rotate, you take your thigh, and you sweep his upper thigh, like his front pocket. Okay. This is one that, uh, if you want to practice as a fit in, so you can get the motion down, you kind of do that. So you're throwing your leg up, right? Because there's no slow way to do this. This isn't one where you can hold them on you. This is, once you go, you're going. And so, try, try this to begin with, just to get the right distance. Still trying to keep him pressed forward on me. You can see I'm getting him off the ground. Okay. But I'm hitting him basically right here. You know, on slightly to the inner of my thigh. On the front pocket of him, on his thigh. And so you're sweeping his hips out by leveraging his thighs. Where his thighs go, his hips will go. Right. This, it's, you, your whole body goes. That's the feeling. And sometimes I'll whip my leg to add a little extra momentum if the guy's heavy. But the feeling is, you know, you drive them and your whole body goes. It's like coho gate. Right? Not where you don't get anything on the kick. Okay. Keep trying. Now, you're starting to get him off that, but then you slide past that front, that plane. It's not like I'm driving through his center. If I drive through his center, now he's leaning back. If that's the case, I should throw him backwards. Like, whatever the direction the guy's sort of already falling, that's the direction you throw him. Because gravity's assisting you. Try to go the other way, it's just, you're forcing it. So you think of sliding through this, this plane, right? So, <clears throat> you drive him to break his structure. But then you have, without, without, what most people do is they try not to touch the other person, so they'll bend, they'll arch their own, like they'll bend their own spine to try to not get around. And now I've broken my posture to try to accommodate, and that's not good. I want his posture broken and mine solid. So, stay there. Basically what you have to do is slide along the front. You know, you still have that connection. So we're here. You get enough distance, and then you slide along that plane. 
because he's already off balance. All I gotta do is lift his leg up. If you clear it one inch off the ground, he's going. Right? That's all you have to do. You don't have to throw him like 15 feet in the air. You just gotta get his feet off the ground. Once he's here, you can steer him. He's going to fall. You're reaching around his head and grab onto his lap. Okay? This is probably the easiest one. So you start to pull him this way. So you're trying to pull him. You think of the line between his feet, you're taking him on that weak line. Right? As you do that, you start to twist. You block his leg with your leg. And then just throw him And this is also one that works really well with people who are shorter than you. You can also move it this way and then change the direction. So if I was like moving this way, like I was going to do with Haragi Shinage, and decide to change, twist and basically roll him over. This one everybody should pick up pretty quick. So one time. So we're in here, blah, blah, and you know, maybe I get here. And say, so, okay, I'm going to pull him that way. You block the leg, right? And you twist and sink. This is basically on like night if my hands are like this. Or it can be like this. Or it can be like this. It doesn't matter. You give yourself some space between each other. And what I want you to do is take one step forward. Okay? So you saw it, right? Y'all seen this before, so. So, so come here and face the reflection in the window, stand natural. And I'm gonna point with my fingers at what you're gonna do as you take your step. Take a step whenever you like. See how your shoulders shifted this way first? Yeah, it's because we're afraid to fall. Now, if you know to pay attention to it, go ahead and step and you'll see it. See how you shifted sideways before you took a step? It's because we want to be sure that we're not gonna fall. So we push our weight and support it on one leg and take that step like, and then you start to make yourself go forward. And people, some people walk like this. It's poor walking. What you can practice, and you know, it's natural to do that. What you can practice is like, you let your weight go forward, just pick your foot up and move forward. It's much more efficient for walking. So you have to like, let your weight go to the tipping point, and you just pick your foot up and fall forward. And you, you move less side to side. So here's another thing that people will do, like, here we get them, get them some space inside, like inside the mat, so you won't step on one of them. Because we're all going to go into Ichimoni. So you're here, and I take Ichimoni. Like a good Ichimoni, not just uh, what is going on? Take a good each moment. Go ahead. Not bad. Do it again. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Ah, see, now you're doing it the other way. Putting the weight on his four legs as you can step back. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is this important? It's important, like, if we're grappling. And now we're connected, right? You can grab on me too. Let's say I need to move, say I need to move this way for whatever reason, and I do this. Now you know. And you instinctively know that I'm going here. And so that means you can stop it. Or if I need to go here, I just go here. So when you're doing this throw, that's why I'm like, you're here. Move the foot, don't. Because now your whole body has shifted, and because you're connected, you've sh shifted the opponent too. And that one, it's a telegraph. He'll start to read what you're doing. Two, it'll probably reset the balance, and now the throw is no longer viable. Like it's, it's you've shifted, you put his structure back in order, or put his balance back on point, instead of keeping it broken. It's like when you do Gansai Kanage and Kianako, right? The first bit is this, right? <clears throat> so if you watch Braxton's spine, okay, I've got him slightly tilted forward, right? And I never give it back to him. 
I always keep him slightly out of bounds, or at least I'm trying to. Right? It's not like what people will do when they go, okay, boom, and I give it back to him and now he can resist me. Right? People say there's like no resistance training in the vision. <coughs> oh, they don't train this resistance. There's two ways to interpret that. One is physical resistance. If you're doing Tai Chi correctly, you destroy his physical resistance by the movement in itself. The other factor is resisting his opposing will. And that's, you know, that strain should be there. That's why, like, when you do certain things, you should test it, right? If he throws, like, a punch, and then Yoranuke, he can still try to touch my face with his fist and test to see if my position is correct. If I'm like this, go ahead, it breaks. And so I know, okay, that's not... That's not correct, right? So, uh, so you have to practice this type of push with that in mind. Get the feeling, okay, I've got his structure tilted somewhat forward. Gravity's helping you. Put the weight on your leg. It doesn't have to be all your weight. It doesn't have to be for five minutes. It's just enough to move. And then you're good again. And you throw. You know That is the one drawback. Like, yeah, when you're smart in the throw, it's better to start with someone as close to your own size, which is why you're paired together. But generally speaking, that's why I don't like white belts training with each other. It's not, it's, it's generally because you don't know how to be a proper UK yet. Right? It's, it's a, uh, especially when someone is learning something new, and this is for everybody, like if you're partnering up with someone new and they're trying to learn something. You have to kind of give it to them the first few times until they start getting it. Then you can start adding a little more realism. Like, like it's a multi gaku. I've talked about this often. Like, you did a multi gaku and you're the uke and you grab the the, uh, the case out, right? The scarf. And if you like have it solid from the get go, like they may may not even get the hand release to even learn how to do the throw, the, the wrist lock. And so you give it to them the first few times. So the form starts, they develop a picture of what this should look like. Then as time goes on, like especially for all the Don ranks, if I grab you, I'm grabbing. Like I'm not gonna let you, like when you're being lazy and not doing it correctly and pushing to the side, I'm not letting go. When you do it correctly, I will have no choice but to let go. Right? And so especially for when you guys train with each other, that's how you should be doing it. It's not necessarily exactly, you're not trying to shut down their technique because you know exactly what they're trying to do. I mean, anybody can shut down a technique when they know what you're trying to do. You know, that's, you know, there's a proper progression. Like, everything should start out easy and full, fully compliant. Then as they get a sense of what they're doing, you know, this is for anybody. Uh, a sense of what they're doing, then you gradually add resistance. You know, both physical resistance and a, you know, like an opposing will. You know, because the bad guys, he's trying to accomplish his thing too. It's not you're not just doing what you do. The bad guy's trying to do what he's doing too, right? Or the opponent, however you want to look at it. So. When you're, you have to bear this, and you have to learn how to train. It's not just mimicking techniques. You have to learn how to train. So check, boom. Take the knee, right? Take the arm. You can have a choke there.
So check the backhand, come in with the knee. He's big, so I've got to put a little more weight in it. Right? Drop him. You want him to end up on the side, right? So that you can take the arm. Okay, try that. You have to set yourself up already. He's already caught. Like, don't break contact because he can pull his arm down. And now he's out. So, when you get through here, he's already there. Like, you can even break his arm there. collar to throw him over. Like the arm will be enough. He's down, so boom, and then run away. So but definitely like when he falls, you hit, you set yourself up knowing he's gonna fall. Right? So you never lose contact. Because you don't want him to fall like on his back. He'll be able to defend himself. So you want him to fall on the side. And you can do what you need to do. 